Hey, you know how sometimes someone will say that you should not smoke a particular pipe tobacco on an empty stomach? Usually that means it's got a powerful nicotine punch, and if you smoke it on an empty stomach, you might get an upset tummy. Well, today I've got a tobacco review about something that you should not smoke in an empty stomach because if you do, it's gonna make you hungry. So before we get started, why don't you stop the video right now, run to the kitchen and make yourself a sandwich and then come back and we'll talk. Everybody. It's David Dorian Ross here, the founder of the Virtual Pipe Club, and this is the Virtual Pipe Club on YouTube, a place where you can find tobacco reviews, tips on getting greater pipe smoking pleasure, and of course, the live streams and the recordings of the live streams of our weekly Virtual Pipe Club meetings. All of that's brought to you by this guy here, who's not a pipe or pipe smoking expert, but I do know a few things. I know I like good people, I like a good conversation, and occasionally, I like a good smoke. And if any of that is the kind of thing that you're into, then I invite you to hit the subscribe button and of course click the bell icon because that's how you know whenever I do something new on this channel. Today I'm doing a review on San Bruno Flake. This is a tobacco that I decided to uh, smoke and give a review on because of a request from one of the viewers uh, who said that they had been smoking San Bruno Flake forever and they would appreciate a review on it. So I thought, well, I'd like to give that a try. And uh, when I started smoking it, I found all kinds of uh, interesting things about it. Um, for example, this is a perennial favorite for a lot of people, particularly in the UK and the EU. Apparently, San Bruno has been around forever. It's gone through a couple of different manufacturers, and it's still a favorite of a lot of people. It's got some Virginias and some Kentuckys in there. You know I don't know about that kind of stuff, but um, I think it will come into play in today's review. So first things first, when I opened up the tin, you could have knocked me over because of the smell of vinegar. Now vinegar is used as a preservative in this tobacco. They use a lot of things for preservatives uh, when they tin up tobacco so that it doesn't get mold or doesn't decay in some way. And vinegar is one of those things that they've used for many, many years, uh, decades, centuries, maybe even, I don't know about centuries, but uh, for a long, long time. It's a food and so it's food grade and it does help to preserve the tobacco um, and the first thing that happened when I opened up this tin I stuck my nose in it and boom huge vinegar smell fortunately it dissipates pretty quickly you you leave it open for you know just maybe an hour or so and you come back and the most of the vinegar smell is already gone but a little bit of that still lingers in the tobacco smell in the tin and also in the smoke so I'm gonna talk about that today because it gives you a really interesting flavor. So the head or the, the first taste of this tobacco um, is uh, actually quite smooth and creamy. Now, creamy is one of those words, again, that I'm discovering that tobacco reviewers often use and you scratch your head going like, what does that mean, creamy? And here's what I came up with, that creamy is that flavor that sort of wafts over your tongue and palate in a very smooth kind of way. It's not a, a spicy, peppery, hot, or um, sweet, sour, or anything like, you know, it's just, it just like eases itself in very nicely, covers over everything it, like cream, like I guess creamy would be a good kind of word for that. You know, when I'm drinking tea and I talk about creamy, a lot of times things like English breakfast tea or something that is creamy reminds me of a root beer float. And so, you know, there's a little bit of that root beer float, creamy, ice creamy kind of texture and feel uh, that enters in. And, and that that's the main thing I got out of the head, the first taste of this, of this San Bruno Flake. In that head note, I begin to feel or begin to taste um, some of that vinegar. Now, you know, a lot of times um, I'll listen to reviewers describe Virginia tobaccos as having sort of a citrus note, a citrus flavor. And, you know, once again, it does, it's not like you're smoking grapefruit. It doesn't taste like, you know, an orange or something like that. But it's, but it's opposed to other flavors like you know, really sweet flavors or, you know, earthy, nutty, like my Burleys have that nutty flavor, but it has a, a little bit of sour in it. 
but a, you know, in in contrast to like a, a fruity sourness, in this case, it's I think it's that vinegar still in there. So there is that little bit of a tang, a, sa- a slightly sour tang. And, and for all of me, I swear, it reminds me of sauerkraut, right? And so... You know, this is a this is a theme that's going to continue through the rest of the notes that I got when I'm smoking this tobacco. All right, so now let's get into the body of the flavor, body of the smoke. So after the first initial hit, that creaminess that creeps into your mouth with a little bit of that sour, sauerkraut kind of taste in it, it begins to expand. It begins to taste like a whole meal, not just a little bit of sauerkraut, but I swear I could taste like, mm, like I've just eaten a Polish sausage at Oktoberfest. You know, I've got that, that a little bit of that meaty, not, not as much as the rustica when I tasted that and it tasted really meaty. Um, this is more like just a, a subtle hint of sausage in there along with the sauerkraut. Maybe it's just a hint. Maybe it's just an imagination. If I'm tasting sauerkraut, I ought to be tasting a, a, a hot dog or a Polish sausage at the same time. I don't know. But I can tell you one thing along with <clears throat> that um, that taste will come an aftertaste I'm going to get to in the tail of the tail notes of this tobacco and it really like brings this whole I've just eaten something all together now before I get into the tail notes I want to want to suggest something to you it really makes a difference whether you're sipping this tobacco or drawing heavily because I noticed I got two very different kinds of flavor, taste, texture, sensations. When you draw heavily, it all of a sudden gets really spicy and, and peppery. And I'm pretty sure that comes from the Dark Fire Kentucky that's a part of San Bruno Flake. And I have to confess that I cheated to come up with that because I put it aside and then went and dug out some dark fire Kentucky out of my cellar and smoked that all by itself and drew, you know, big on it. And I'm like, oh, yes, indeed. That is the same flavor I get when I draw heavy on the San Bruno. On the other hand, when you snip, when, when I st- sip, when I sipped it <laughs> very carefully, then it was back to creamy again. Then it was back to, oh, there's that sort of mellow, I'm eating a sandwich. I'm just, I'm, I've, I can taste the, the subtle sauerkraut in the background there, maybe munching on a hot dog. And, a, and that's going to bring us to the tail. Now, the tail, remember, is the aftertaste. It's what you um, sort of lingers in your mouth after you have put the pipe put put the pipe down or put the pipe away a little bit and also sometimes is reinforced or, or keeps coming back every time you breathe when you breathe through your mouth and the air sort of goes past your taste buds and all the linings of your mouth the, it the flavor comes back and and here I swear swear to God the, the taste was mustard like have you got a little gray poupon I'll tell you you know this was something I almost forgot to mention that there is this um, smokiness. And again, I, I have a feeling that it's coming from the Dark Fire Kentucky. And it reminded me of like a, a, a wood-fired pizza oven. San Bruno Flake, I loved it. Uh, thank you for the recommendation and the request for doing this review. Uh, it's a great smoke. It is. I can totally see why people uh, love this tobacco. Um, it's a meal in a can. Right, right there. I would recommend that you always drink this with a beer <laughs> or smoke this while you're drinking a beer. I can't even get the words to come out right. Anyway, um, there you go. How'd I do? I know I stumbled around through all of this, but um, I love your feedback as always. If you thought that uh, there was anything that I missed in there, please let me know. If there's something that you'd like to hear me talk about, I'd love to hear that. If you think that I am really like out of my mind when I describe some of these tobaccos, I want to hear that too. Negatives as good as positives. I always learn something. Anyway, that's all I've got for this edition of the Virtual Pipe Club on YouTube and uh, this invitation to come and join us. And this is my time and I'm going to get on out of here. Thanks, everybody. Have a great day and a great smoke. <laughs>